Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Franco Tanelli and this is a very special video, if you like, with the tag of warning. Those who will try to do things, as I show in this video, have to have a teacher. This is also a video for desperate singers who just love to be an op opera singers and seem not to have an opera voice, just the so-called falsettino, very small voice. So this video is going to give you some ways to understand how classical and especially opera vocals work. Somebody called opera vocals as screaming, though he added beautiful screaming. We can add up also artistic screaming. But does it have anything in common with screaming? singing an opera. This is what I'm going to show you and explain to you and how it is going to help you actually to discover your opera voice. I have to tell you that mechanism of screaming is very similar to mechanism of producing chiaroscuro. The difference is of course that screaming doesn't have a, a constant pitch so you don't hold on the same note. It's usually sliding. The other difference is most of the screamers don't support the scream and they just scream on their vocal cords. When they scream on a vocal cords, you know what happens. If you argue with your husband or wife and the argument was quite you know, loud, you can lose your voice. That's what happens when you scream. At the same time, screaming sometimes is the only way to show young opera aspirant what is a big voice? What is chiaroscuro voice? And of course, I say it again because I don't want you to come back to me and say, Franco, I was screaming for one month and I totally lost my voice. This is, of course, one of the scenarios. Don't take screaming literally. And again, I recommend this for those who just want to be an opera singers. It's their dream, but they found that they have only very small voice like bossa nova voice, okay? But they want to be Othellos, okay, or at least Dukes of Mantu and sing full pledged operas. So, for those people who don't believe they have anything, they have to step ahead and actually break a barrier of bringing the screen into a singing and eventually into supported singing. I will again repeat this experiment, the best conducted under the guidance of the teacher. Why? Because the difference between scream and supported scream is big difference. If you just scream on your vocal throat, then you just abuse your vocal cords, you may produce a short loud sound, but you abuse your voice. Now, if you support in this video, I'm going to give you that first exercise, though I actually already published a video discovering natural voice, I didn't talk about screaming, because screaming it has a negative connotation in a way. In certain cases it really helps to discover your opera voice, but I say it again, of course if you scream once or two times, experiment with yourself, it won't hurt you, but if you do it constantly, you're in great danger. I recommend to do it under the guidance or at least you have to have a certain person who is an expert. It doesn't have to be necessarily a Pavarotti. A vocal coach who is very experienced with the sound. So when you do do the screaming, at least you will be able to tell you if that's the sound you are aiming at. Again and again, please don't conduct this experiment unless you know what you're doing. And what is important in this screaming? Okay, I can show you supported screaming. Let's take the most popular phrase from Italian vocabulary, Mamma Mia. And uh, you can hear a lot of screaming on this uh, particular phrase. In Italy, with a quite beautiful and projective voice, and the other will do it with very, very, really screamy voice. Mamma Mia! So that is a totally bad scream, of course. I showed you that maybe they are the worst, but I showed you my worst. There is no resonance in the screaming. So the screaming is for close relationship between you and wife. But if you want to scream at your neighbor, who is 200 meters from you, then you have to do something like it. Mamma mia! Mamma mia! So you see, what am I doing is, this is a very good way of getting into... It's a scream, but you don't hear necessarily that this scream is on vocal cords. Mamma mia! A little bit pretentious, yes. It's like, it's not, I'm not really screaming at you. 
or at my neighbor. I'm pretending to be screaming. It's like I am on stage. I'm a drama actor and I'm using this loud. Because if I say, Mamma Mia, in movies, the mic, everything will get you a very natural way, of course. You don't have to necessarily scream it out loud. But in theater, if you say something like, Mamma Mia, you know, oh Dio, you have to pronounce it that the audience will hear you. So, a dramatic exclamation. Use this. And don't use it necessarily in my key. You try different keys on doing Mamma Mia! Oh Mamma Mia! Oh Mamma Mia! In Verizon, there's a lot of uh, exclamations that are not musical. This is one of the reasons I don't find that Verismo style exists today. It kind of died because this natural relationship is gone. As, uh, everybody is doing the fake signiosis. <laughs> which has no meaning, unfortunately. And a true verismo was meant to distinguish between those dukes and ladies who sing an opera. They don't relate to human emotions, to human tragedy necessarily. It's, it's the art and them. It was that kind of situation in the art when the, the vocalists and artists were rather just singers and not necessarily great actors. And so this came into to bring to opera more realism. It was always the fight, you know, more or less than the other ones would come and, you know, give more technique and then again more realism and those stars will fight forever. But what is important for you in this lesson is to know that screaming, of course, as I showed you, not because that is, of course, is gonna uh, not improve your vocal cords, but it's gonna give you maybe a permanent knot in your vocal cords, and then you will sing eventually like Louis Armstrong. Well, good morning, baby. Welcome back to town. Armstrong. Screaming, but in a supported way. For those who don't know my programs, I have over 200 programs that show you how to project, show you how to train your breathing consciously that is very important because what takes the impact from your vocal cords is diaphragm working so if i do ah that is the low now ha 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 a little secret about screaming i actually learned how to scream when i was very far from opera singing i come from opera family back then when i was 18 17 18 i went to karate school called uh, kyokushinkai and I remember it was uh, my trainer, his name was Baramiz, he was one of the best. And I was already in advanced group when he was actually showing his senpais and his uh, students how to do Kia sound. It's very difficult to understand what it means by tradition. Definitely what it means when you strike, you say Kia. You know why Kia is pronounced? First of all, it's an intimidation sound. If you have strong resonance, you can actually yeah, and if you're quite close to a person with dramatic tenor voice and you can scream Kia into his face he's probably gonna have a temporary loss of his hearing but he showed me something he was not an opera singer he was just a karate guy and he showed me Kia sound which was amazingly powerful I mean I showed to my students but camera of course will not catch the power I always ask my students prepare for the shock and they why I say well I'm gonna show you a very loud and very easy sound and I say okay so are you prepared? Even when they are prepared, when I pronounce this sound, I can see they are in shock because it's a very powerful sound. What I'm saying, I'm not singing with this powerful sound. Maybe three Mario del Monacos at the same time, but the, the problem with Kia projection is that it's not two octave projection. It's just a projection of a loud sound. Just one concentrated, one let's say, the most powerful resonance sound that person can have, supported by the diaphragm. It's done like this. Everything is trembles here when, when you do that. And this sound, again, Kia. This is the, uh, it's not an opera voice as yet, but it's the projection that is formed by the resonance and by pushing the diaphragm, balancing the compression. That's why you can do it again. Kia also has another practical sense. And those who know karate, they know when, say so you say Kia, this is in this moment, your diaphragm is very tense. So your stomach is very, very, it's like stone. 
and a moment of strike Kia you may get another strike from your opponent and at that moment of saying Kia he cannot damage you because you're protected like Domingo said I can even sing and you can hit me and you will be protected this is false for those who really really are aspirants of opera and think they have just bossa nova voice they don't want to sing bossa nova okay it's not your style you want to be in a big opera style but you have a very small voice and it's like an obsession so this is one of the tricks if you like to check out your resonance at all if you have you might have a bigger or smaller but definitely this exercise conducted under the guidance of a professional or if you're extremely intelligent you can do it on your own but of course one of the things that you have to think about it is after you do it did you hurt your vocal cords did you feel like <clears throat> after if you feel that it's not correct if you feel that you somehow tired your vocal cords then this is not correct so then try to do it on a support yeah see this is slowly yeah. pushing your diaphragm down and then yeah. thank you very much next time i will talk about eight subcategories of tenor voice starting from dramatic barry tenors and leggero or tenore di grazia thank you very much